Hi everyone. I hope you are enjoying this special SAFE Summit. I'm sure you already connected with some great people and attended some awesome sessions. Before we dive into the details, I would like to anticipate what you can take with you from this session. Basically, three key takeaways. So number one, you will learn which four areas you need to pay special attention to when preparing and executing a remote PI planning and which concrete and simple techniques you can use to deal with it in an effective way. Number two, you will hear real life customer stories and experiences. And number three, last but not least, you will also see how the PI planning app can relieve you of much of the stress of remote PI planning and how it improves the overall quality of your remote PI planning event. Just so that you know who I am, a few words about myself. My name is Raphael. I'm one of the co-founders of Rentouch. Rentouch is a Swiss-based software company developing tools for agile teams. And our main product is the PI planning app which is a tool specifically designed to facilitate PI plannings and especially tackle the challenges of remote PI plannings. It also integrates perfectly with Jira, Rally, and Microsoft Azure DevOps, but we will also have a closer look at the PI planning app within the next 20 minutes. Everything I share with you today, I have learned and experienced with our PI planning app customers, which already conduct the PI planning remotely even before COVID. Okay, so remote is a hot topic, especially these days. The current situation has forced all of us to make virtual communication part of our everyday life. Even the most conservative organizations had to adapt to this new way of working, and that also in a very, very short period of time. Gartner and other research and advisory firms clearly state that remote will not go away. The companies have now realized that it is possible to save a lot of money by not having to fly people in every 10 weeks for just a two-day PI planning. Now, the question is, how can we still guarantee high quality in PI planning when it's remote? In order to get the point here, we have to take a step back and look at why we make this effort for PI planning. And that's basically to align all the teams on the art to a shared mission and vision. Achieving alignment requires transparency. And transparency is only possible if the teams communicate a lot with each other. In a collocated PI planning, it is not really a problem to achieve high transparency and a lot of communication. Although a remote PI planning with 120 people, all connected via individual channels, it is completely different. So transparency and the high degree of interaction and conversations between teams is exactly where we have to concentrate our energy when facilitating remote PI planning. So based on the experience of our customers, we have identified four areas on which we focus the most when preparing and conducting remote PI planning. Virtual communication, tooling, pre-PI planning simulation, and focused during PI planning. So the first thing we need to understand is virtual communication. When I say this, most people reply, yes, but I know what virtual communication is. It simply means that we are not in the same room when we talk with each other. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. We need to comprehend that remote collaboration is a skill that we need to internalize and that we need to learn. In a face-to-face -face PI planning, we can simply say to the other Scrum Master, hey John, I need to briefly discuss a dependency from my team to your team. Let's go over to the program board. Here we see that in virtual communication, there are always three aspects to be covered. One is the audio track. The second is the video. Do I see the emotions in John's face when he speaks? And the third is the visuals. So do we both see the same program board when we discuss the dependency? The PI planning app helps with real-time synchronized boards. In terms of handling, they are very close to the physical way of working. And when I'm sitting in London and John is in Denver, he sees what I'm doing on the board, thanks to the real-time synchronization, and he can himself intervene. 
So to establish the same quality in our virtual communication as we have in our collocated setting, we have to achieve the same feeling of a real-life face-to-face conversation in our remote setting. And this leads me directly to the next point, tooling. Let's be honest, without technology, you can't run a remote PI planning. That's a fact. But for remote PI planning, only two tools are actually needed. A video conferencing tool. Fortunately, it's easy to say that every company today already uses Microsoft Teams, Zoom, WebEx, or similar. The only other solution you need is the PI planning app. It is extremely important to keep the tool set very limited. This way, we also ensure that people can concentrate on planning. If they have to constantly switch between different tools, this is always an interruption in the planning flow and not only costs a lot of time, but it's also very tiring for the participants. One of our US clients once said, and that was before they were a PI planning app client, we don't want to spend time and money in a new tool. We just use existing Google Docs, Excel spreadsheets, and everything in combination with PowerPoint. After PI planning, they came back and said, all right, people really struggle to connect the different tools. Now we really want to go back to a simple solution that helps us to be as close to face-to-face -to -face as possible. Don't know what exactly happened in their PI planning, but I can imagine it was not good. So they had to learn the value of the PI planning app the hard way. You might wonder why you need exactly the PI planning app. There are countless digital whiteboard and visual collaboration tool providers on the market that advertise their tool to be effective for collaboration, right? But their tools are mainly designed for groups of 10 to 15 people. And there is nothing wrong with that. But to plan effectively with an agile release train consisting of 120 people, you need a different solution. That's exactly what the PI planning app was designed for. With the PI planning app, we want the teams to be able to concentrate on their plan, that they can find creative solutions and achieve their own goals. For that, there needs to be a good balance between flexibility on the board, so um, we can arrange the stickies the way we want, like on a physical board, and clear boundaries so that planning does not degenerate into an unmanageable chaos. Once you are in the situation and you have a mess, to clean up that mess in remote PI planning is practically a physical impossibility. Something that opened my eyes in that regard was a story from a Hong Kong-based customer. Before they used the PI planning app, they used Miro for their first PI planning. What had happened? Certain participants had started to use different colors than originally intended for user stories, which led to misunderstandings during discussions. When somebody accidentally deleted the label for story points and all estimations of hundreds of stickies disappeared, yeah, the frustration was perfect. What should have been a motivating and team-building event turned into a disaster with participants busy until late at night trying to somehow fix the plan. Even the subsequent transfer of the plan to their Jira also caused huge problems. After this rather bad experience, the decision to go forward and use the PI planning app for any future PI planning was actually an easy one. In the PI planning app, there is the so-called RT cockpit. In the RT cockpit, the RT can prepare the PI planning in such a way that it does not get out of hand. He can tell the teams which sticky types to use and which colors they should have. This allows all the teams to go to another team's team board at any time and instantly understand what is going on there. The time to ask whether this yellow sticky is really a user story or is it an enabler uh, is basically omitted and the participants can talk directly about the planning related topics. The structure the PI planning app provides is also needed to establish a real single source of truth. Without a single source of truth, communication in a remote PI planning is not possible. The PI planning app seamlessly integrates with Jira, Rally, Microsoft Azure DevOps, so no need to manually and painfully transferring the final plan to your Jira. With 
the PI planning app, it's already there. Even better, if your teams prepared some work for the PI planning, they simply drag them, for example, from the Rally backlog into a synchronized iteration and they automatically populate in the PI planning app. Just as a reminder, make sure everyone has access to the tools, everyone has a login. You don't want to take the approach that one person does all the planning work on the boards. Everybody should work together like you are used to on physical boards. Otherwise, the engagement rate will drastically drop. Regarding your video conferencing tool, make sure you have breakout rooms ready. Don't think at the day of PI planning, hmm, breakout rooms would be nice. Prepare it before PI planning and also inform the teams on how to use it. Before you go into PI planning, test the internet bandwidth with all the participants working from the home office. I can't say it enough, test, test and test again. You really can't test enough. It's technology, things can go sideways. Try to think when preparing of the worst case scenarios and make sure you have a plan B. An integral part which basically decides on the success or failure of remote PI planning is whether to take the time to run a simulation. It's about doing a one hour simulation session with the participants one week before the real PI planning takes place. The goal is that all art members know what they will have to expect from PI planning. So they know how to use the tools, which working agreements exist, and they learn the most common procedures of PI planning and see what happens differently uh, than in collocated PI planning. When preparing this simulation, it is important that we create exactly the same starting point as it will be in the real PI planning. This means, let's assume we use WebEx in our company. All participants join via WebEx from where they will be in real PI planning, for example, their desk at home, a co-working space or the office. This way, we can make sure that everyone knows how to connect. If their internet connection is stable enough and to minimize the risk of having to run a software update on their WebEx right before they want to join the real PI planning. Furthermore, we are preparing a PI planning session for the simulation in the PI planning app, which has exactly the same setup as in real PI planning. The same sticky types, possibly even connected to a Sandbox Jira instance, a Sandbox workspace in Rally, or a Sandbox project in Microsoft Azure DevOps. Done with that, we are ready to go into the simulation. Now it is important that all participants actively participate. In a few seconds, we show them how to navigate through the PI planning app, program backlog board, program board, program risk board, how to get to the canvases to do the confidence voting or solution brainstormings. Then we can dive into different processes. I think it's best if we start by breaking down features into user stories. So we assign a feature from the program backlog board where all the items are ranked by the WSJF value to our own team. Thanks to the fact that the color changes, we have a great overview of which features are already in planning and which aren't. It appears on the program board next to our team name. We go to our team board, create a user story, give it a story point value and link it directly to the feature that we assigned to our team earlier. We make everyone aware that this user story already exists in Jira now, that the ALM key is a direct link to Jira. So this is the story we have just created with the summary, the story points, the link to the feature and in which iteration we planned it. After that, I would go into the following procedures on how to handle dependencies between teams. One team creates a dependency sticky and sends it to the other team. The other team plans it and sends it to the program board in order to visualize the dependency there. All 100% transparent. Then what to do with the risks, roam them on the team board and at what point in time to send them to the program risk board. Also how to define objectives. Uh, point out again when to assign business value and who and when to assign actual business value. 
how to specify the capacity for an iteration, briefly outline what happens when the capacity is exceeded and where this becomes visible, namely on the program board. Also, so the RT has a good overview of the health of our plan. The simulation gives everyone involved a feeling of being ready. And most importantly, all these basic questions do not become a topic in real PI planning because you don't have time for that. Furthermore, clear working agreements are another important factor in determining whether PI planning is a success or not. The PI planning simulation is a good time to identify weaknesses and if necessary, to take appropriate measures to include them in the working agreements. The PI planning app also has a working agreement canvas, which we have developed and which is loved and used by our customers. Let's come to the last point, focus during PI planning. It's very important that we keep the distraction during PI planning as little as possible. We want the teams to be able to concentrate on the high level plan, identify the PI risks, define meaningful PI objectives and know the dependencies between their own and other teams. In short, that they vote with five in the confidence vote. We don't want them to get lost in details. That's why the PI planning app has a reduced user interface. What does that mean? This means that it only has the functions that are needed in PI planning. No distraction from features that become relevant during PI execution. The PI planning app serves as an unobtrusive supporter of PI planning, like we would describe a physical board. No one needs to think how to operate the physical board. Same with the PI planning app. So summarized once again, virtual communication is a skill treated like one. Have a special eye on people interacting with each other and to foster communication overall. Invest a substantial part of your time into preparation and conduct a pre-PI planning simulation with your art. Have clear working agreements for your remote PI planning event. And to enable all of that, use the video conferencing tool you already have at hand in combination with the PI planning app. You can sign up for a PI planning app demo with your team under demo.piplanning.io and or try it 30 days for free under trial.piplanning.io. Now I wish you an awesome rest of the SAFE Summit and hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.